The incident happened in the Arako Strait, which connects the port of Nagoya in Japan to the open sea. The strait has a buoyed channel, with two light buoys marking its centre line, positioned on a heading of 133 degrees. The incident happened at night, when there was good visibility and moderate weather. At a time of 13 minutes before collision, C minus 13, ship M crossed the centre line of the channel into the opposite lane. At a time of 11 minutes before collision, C minus 11, ship M was still steady on a course of 123 degrees and positioned clearly in the opposite lane. At a time of six minutes before collision, C minus six, ship M sees the red side light of ship G at a bearing of six to seven degrees on her starboard bow, and ship G is in a position to see the green side light of ship M at a bearing of five to six degrees on her port bow. At a time of two minutes before collision, C minus two, ship G sounded five short blasts and flashed the oldest light at the other ship. Both ships kept their course and speeds. At a time of 1.5 minutes before collision, C minus 1.5, ship G sounded one short blast, put the rudder hard to starboard, and ordered half a head speed, while ship M sounded two short blasts and put the rudder hard to port. At a time of one minute before collision, C minus one, ship G ordered full speed ahead, while ship M was still turning to port. At time of collision, ship G is turning starboard with a speed of between 15 to 17 knots. When ship M ordered full speed astern, the bow of ship G struck ship M on the starboard side in the vicinity of cargo hold number one, and at an angle of about 45 degrees. Ship M sustained considerable damage, but both ships remained afloat, and there was no loss of life. In your opinion, which vessel violated which rule? Click on the buttons for a quick overview of the relevant rules. Rule six: safe speed. Rule eight: action to avoid collision. Rule nine: narrow channels. Rule ten: traffic separation schemes. Rule fourteen. Head-on situation. Rule 15: crossing situation. Rule 17: action by stand-on vessel. Type your answer in the space below. Click done print button to lock your answer. Extract from Rule 6: safe speed. Every vessel shall at all times proceed at a safe speed, so that she can take proper and effective action to avoid collision and be stopped within a distance appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and conditions.
Extract from Rule 8. Action to avoid collision. A. Any action to avoid collision shall be taken in accordance with the rules of this part, and, if the circumstances of the case admit, be positive, made in ample time, and with due regard to the observance of good seamanship. Extract from Rule 9. Narrow Channels. A vessel proceeding along the course of a narrow channel or fairway shall keep as near to the outer limit of the channel or fairway which lies on her starboard side as is safe and practicable. Extract from Rule 10. Traffic Separation Schemes. A vessel using a traffic separation scheme shall 1. Proceed in the appropriate traffic lane in the general direction of traffic flow for that lane. 2. So far as practicable, keep clear of traffic separation line or separation zone. And 3. Normally join or leave a traffic lane at the termination of the lane, but when joining or leaving from either side, shall do so at as small an angle to the general direction of traffic flow as practicable. Extract from Rule 14. Head-on situation. When two power-driven vessels are meeting on reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses so as to involve risk of collision, each shall alter her course to starboard so that each shall pass on the port side of the other. Extract from Rule 15. Crossing situation. When two power-driven vessels are crossing so as to involve risk of collision, the vessel which has the other on her starboard side shall keep out of the way and shall, if the circumstances of the case admit, avoid crossing ahead of the other vessel. Extract from Rule 17. Action by stand-on vessel. Where one of two vessels is to keep out of the way, the other shall keep her course and speed. The latter vessel may, however, take action to avoid collision by her manoeuvre alone as soon as it becomes apparent to her that the vessel required to keep out of the way is not taking appropriate action in compliance with these rules. When, from any cause, the vessel required to keep her course and speed finds herself so close that collision cannot be avoided by the action of the give-way vessel alone, she shall take such action as will best aid to avoid collision. Ship M was steering a course of about 10 degrees to port of a direct course along the channel, and therefore she was a ship proceeding along the channel in the opposite direction to that of ship G, rather than a ship crossing the channel or strait, and therefore the crossing rule under the collision regulations did not apply. Similarly, there was no stand-on vessel with an obligation to keep her course and speed until the two ships were so close to each other that a collision could not be avoided by the action of one vessel alone. On the contrary, both ships were free to alter either their course or speed and keep to the starboard side of the fairway in accordance with Rule 9 and the principles of good seamanship at any time in order to avoid collision. Additionally, the principal aspects related to establishing what is considered a safe speed were not observed. M was at fault in four main respects. A. Setting a course of 123 degrees, which took her over to her wrong side of the channel b. Leaving it much too late to take avoiding action to avoid a collision. c. Keeping a poor lookout when approaching each other. Ship G was observed showing her masthead lights a little open to starboard and her red side light clearly visible. d. Finally, when finally taking action to avoid a collision, putting the wheel hard to port instead of hard to starboard. All these faults were fundamental to the cause of the collision. Ship G was at fault for not reducing speed by stopping her engines, or at least reducing speed to slow ahead, not later than when the ships were about two miles apart.